Well, how do you do, buckaroos? This is Joe Layton of Cowboys and Indians Magazine, and I'm pleased to say that I'm talking today with Ian Flanagan, a country music artist who is going to be uh, filling our ears with some great music uh, and has a new single, Under a Southern Sky. Hello, Ian. Hey, Joe. Thanks so much for having me on today. What does the song Under a Southern Sky mean to you personally? Uh, personally, Under a Southern Sky, it's just a song about celebrating that kind of summertime feel, your hometown, friends, bonfire. It's just really meant to just feel good for about three and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have just wrapped your debut album, correct? I did. We just we just finished recording. There's a couple couple last mixing notes going back and forth right now between me and uh, the producer but we are done tracking officially so we're really really excited about that you know it it seems odd to refer to you as you know a newcomer because you have been playing music for quite a while uh you did very well for yourself on the voice uh you have uh toured uh a bit with Blake Shelton and I understand you're going to be uh, touring with him a bit more later in the year? Uh, hoping to, as, yeah, as yeah. much as he would like me to be there, I will be there. But honestly, it was um, I just got to open for him on his Spring mm -hmm. Blake tour that he's been doing at all his old Reds. So in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, we just opened for him and it was awesome. And we'll see what the future holds. But in another way, you really are like, on the you're poised about to begin the next level of your career. Yeah, you know, when you say newcomer, I've definitely been doing this since I was 11 years old and I've been touring pretty hard since I was um, 17. And now I'm about, I'll be 33 this September. So I'm getting older now, but yeah, I've been doing this for forever in my life. But as far as newcomer, you know, I'll take anything I can get as far as meeting new people. Cause it's all about, connecting with people and that's what music is. So that's where this platform has been a lot bigger for me and that's where I'm brand new. I've been doing the whole uh, grassroots kind of songwriter <laughs> country and folk Americana scene my whole life. So definitely not new to music, but new to this big, bigger team. How do you feel? I mean, are you, are you nervous? Are you, you know, you filled with expectations? Or I mean, it, it's the uh, next step, isn't it? <laughs> it is, you know, and I got to say, there's always there's always nerves to make sure that you deliver correctly. But I look at this position that I've been given as such a gift and I have so much gratitude for it that it, it really helps my nerves because life is so short. And when you have these amazing opportunities to to kind of be nervous through it, it doesn't it doesn't let you appreciate it in the moment as much so i've i've kind of learned to like not stress so i can actually be there in the moment you know if you um all you can do is your best and you know the more present you are the more you're going to hold that memory for the rest of your life and the better you can give yourself to people so i've never found nervousness to really help in any way now so far what has been the worst live gig you ever performed. The, I mean, like, you know, ever? If you thought, you know, look, maybe I ought to get a job in my brother's dry cleaning store after all. I, I don't know. Which is hilarious because I, I come from a dry cleaning family and worked at a dry cleaners for since I was uh, 14 years old. But I have hundreds and hundreds of shows that are, you know, laughable. And they actually were a large reason of why I did so well on The Voice, because you think that on this big production stage, the sound quality is the best you've ever experienced. But the first few rounds, the sound is, um, you know, the floor monitors are under the stage in the ground, so you can't hear yourself. So my worst show, uh, sound-wise, I was playing at um, a festival in upstate New York, and the sound guy was actually behind the stage because he was a DJ. And I remember being on stage and I had a bunch of like, you know, radio people coming out to hang out and see. And 
I remember this guy deliberately like being behind the stage. My sound was terrible. My guitar like wasn't even in there. It was just um, so much control to sound guys out there. So I got to say that was my absolute worst show. Couldn't hear anything. And it was just pretty much garbage. But that's why you got to love and appreciate your sound guys out there. So sound guys, thank you. They're the best. They can make or break your show in a minute. Okay, now, along with that, though, do you remember the night you performed and it really dawned in on you, you, you know, I really could make a living at this. You want to know where that was? I remember I was 18 years old in Orlando, Florida, and I was traveling around, living there, and um, I can't remember the name of the bar. I think it was... It's like there's a bar called Smokin' Devaney's and it's a pretty rough spot down there. And I remember playing that and we were just playing for beer at the time. And I remember going outside being like, that's it. I've made it. I know what I'm doing for the rest of my life. And um, it was true, <laughs> but it was a dive bar, like just a hole in the wall. And I was, I was good with that. So uh, your uh, first single, uh grow up that was kind of a, a salute to those rough and rowdy days wasn't it? oh man grow up yeah that I, right now in my life i got a lot of i have some more deeper kind of introspective music coming out on this record but i really love just trying to create that good time atmosphere and that's where grow up is just about you know never growing up just celebrating you know being being fun just having a good time and that's what it is no matter what you know life can get pretty uh rigid at times so you gotta ease that up but uh would it be safe to say you've matured just a tad since those rough and rowdy days oh my gosh i have gone through um roller coasters of life i'm currently six years sober these days and a dad and i'm just pretty much living a straight and narrow life now my my rowdy days are long behind me but i can still look back fondly now uh you're involved with an organization hope rocks yes hope rocks is very near and dear to my heart could you, could you tell us a little bit about that yeah so hope rocks started as a um as a music festival because it's the only one of its kind that it's really around bringing the community together and destigmatizing mental illness, addiction, depression. And it's just about creating a space for people to come together to learn about those things and get help if they need it. And there's a bunch of speakers who, you know, and this is all public. It's not like AA or NA where it's all closed and anonymous. It's all like, and it's just about bringing people together and trying to make people feel a little less isolated. I've been a part of it for the last few years and, you know, it's an honor to be, be on board with those guys because they really are one of the only ones doing something like that around music. Now, music and substances do go hand in hand. So it's been a really cool relationship to watch build. And I think we're going to really grow it throughout the years. It used to be a standard question you'd ask of uh, musical artists. Uh, what's in your, your, your CD? right now well nobody uses cd i do but you know I, yeah I, I'm i know it's scary yeah. that cds yeah. aren't here yeah. so so what would be you know in in your your well do people still use ipods what what, what music have you downloaded lately let's put it that way oh for me you know there's there's a local guy in nashville i've been listening to a lot of andy wood he's um guitar player i listen to a lot of tommy Emanuel, more pop country wise i was just listening to lee bryce's new stuff and i listen to a lot of my friends music to be honest um i used to be in a little bit more of a underground music scene throughout the country so david adam burns you know uh aaron goodvin he's on my label as well i try to i listen to a lot of my friends and a lot of instrumental music. I find I get really inspired for like Western style music in like flamenco. So 
I'll, I'll take like a lot of the right hand stuff and try to slow it down to my level and incorporate it into my writing. So I get really inspired through all, all different kinds of stuff, pop, rock. Who do you think has influenced you the most as a musician, as an artist? Oh, you know, again, I gotta say that it was in my early years. You know, I'm from, we were talking about Woodstock before this. I'm from the Hudson Valley, about four miles from Woodstock. That's where I was born and raised. And uh, there, there's a family up there, the Eppards, Jimmy Eppard and Joey Eppard. They were guys local that really inspired me coming up. And then my my guitar teacher, Chuck Misasi, was a really renowned guitar player. And he kind of gave me my, my style of playing. And I really came up playing with a, a country band called the Paul Luke Band. And they were at the first um, Woodstock. They opened up in um, 94, I believe. And those guys kind of took me under their wing when I was younger, in my 20s. And I mean, I've played 100 shows with these guys, I feel like every year. But those local dudes were really what inspired me and kind of showed me the ropes and who I tried to emulate. But early on, definitely guys like, you know, Clapton and Willie Nelson and um, a lot of Bob Dylan for poetry wise. I don't know, I could go on. There's so many different facets of that question for me. I was trying to um, amusing, but on the other hand, I think it's maybe common sense. How many country artists mentioned the influence of, of Bob Dylan? Uh, yeah. And of course he, he went down, recorded three albums in Nashville. So he obviously had a high regard for uh, you know, Nashville musicians and things like that. Uh, yeah, I think it all, like, you know, my, my love for country music is the stories. The mm -hmm. storytelling is everything to me. And um, that's why I don't care where you're from. I work as a songwriter throughout Nashville. Everybody, there's somebody from every single state in this country. And the main thing we're all here for is to write stories and connect. And that's where country music doesn't, it never loses that, that common thread throughout it. Well, you know, I've often said there are three cities in America you go to if you want to start a specific career. You go to New York if you want to be a stage actor. You go to Los Angeles if you want to get into the movies. Yep. You go to Nashville if you want to make music, any kind of music. It's true, man. It is. That's the truth right there. It took me a long time to figure that out. I'd, I'd never, I never stopped through Nashville and saw it. And um, even though I've been a musician, I've been traveling. I went from like upstate New York down to Florida to Colorado to back. And I never spent time in Nashville as a young, as a younger person. So I kind of found Nashville about three years ago, really. And you're completely correct with that. This is the spot to be. Well, the new single is Under a Southern Sky that you can download. Uh, it, it's not, you know, on CD yet. Uh, not yet. When, when, when the album comes out. And uh, uh, do you want to leave us with any music? I'm sorry? Do you want to leave us with any music? Hum a few bars of- stuff. Hum a few bars? Well, you know, I'm never very far from uh, a ah, guitar here. Ah, yes. 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 Is it coming through all right? Yes, it is. So I did get to work on, on the voice and I did get to, um, you know, I got the privilege to record a song and have Blake Shelton feature on it. He's not here right now, but I'll, I'll uh, sing it and we can all imagine him coming in. This is a song called Grow Up that we talked about. Right. Secondhand lighters, headlight dreamers, backseat players, windshield singers, small town living, love the haters, Main Street beat drop review shakers. Stamped hand. 
handshakes, love drunk tipsy, a map, coke, coke, whiskey, kiss me, strap off a shoulder, feel that fire, embers in her eyes gonna burn me higher. Yeah, we're never gonna grow up Well, they might be right Cause we're loud, we're alive And tonight, raising something colder Thought we would one day But hey, we ain't Cause one day still ain't showed up No, we're never gonna grow up Fall in too fast, hang on too long, screw what we need, do what we want, leave our mark, black on leather, don't they know we'll live forever. We're never gonna grow up, well they might be right, cause we're loud, we're alive, and tonight, raising something cold up, thought we would one day, but hey we ain't, cause one day still ain't showed up. Although we doubt ain't getting old if it ain't old now We're never gonna grow up Well, they might be right Cause we're loud, we're alive And tonight, raising something cold up Thought we would one day But hey, we ain't Cause one day still ain't showed up No, we're never gonna grow Thanks, man. I, I, I feel privileged. I, you know, I got my own little, my own little Ian Flanagan con. con anytime, man. Anytime. And I, I don't say that because you know you may get a call. Uh, you know, for the next part, for the next time I have a party. So. Hey, man. I, uh, I'm always traveling around, so we might be able to make it work. <laughs> Best of luck to you, and um, stay well and be safe. Thank you, Joe. I really appreciate you.